going back to similar to three. Um, before we get started, I think what I'm going to do is do a quick highlight of similar to one and two. So in similar to one, we discuss letting go of superfluous things and acquiring the things that are only necessary to live in this world. That's the one where he said, uh, this is not our home. This is not our home, right. In similar to two, we talked about having an abundance, how having an abundance of things is given to us by Yah, by the the Father, so that we can give to those that are lacking. And by giving to those that are lacking, we receive the blessing and they receive the blessing. Okay. All right. So then that was similar to two, talking about the vines and the uh, elm, tree. elm tree. So in similar to three, which contains only four verses, it's a short one, we're going to talk about the righteous and the unrighteous, and the similar to is comparing them. Um, to the green tree and the dry tree. Okay. All right. And sim what is similitude? Tell them what similitude is again. A similitude is when you take two things and compare them okay. to each other. All right. So we're taking trees and comparing them to people. Correct. All right. So the title of this one says, and uh, this one says, Greek trees. What would your book say? Green. Green? Green oh, tree. Hey, green. You know, me and my PDF files. All right, you got the book, so you you checking with the hardcover book. He says, but, uh, I'm going to change it. And the green trees in the winter cannot be distinguished from the dry, so neither can the righteous from the wicked in this world. There, similar to three. See, it says Greek right there, too. It does. <laughs> That's where I got it from. I copied and pasted it. It says, and he showed me many trees whose leaves were shed and which seemed to me to be withered, for they were all alike. And he said unto me, seest thou, seest thou these trees? I said, sir, I see that they look like dry trees. Okay, when we see the word shed, what do we think of? We think of leaves that has fallen off, right? Right. So that is what he's asking him. He says he showed him many trees whose leaves had dropped off and uh, fell to the ground. And the trees appear to be withered. Right. And when we look at something withered, we think of it being limp. Okay. And think of it being dry. It done dried up. It done withered up. You know, a lot of times people, when they see the elderly, they say that they're withered. Or, you know, when you stick your hand down in water for a long amount of time, it's limp and your skin is, yeah, you know, wrinkly. yeah, wrinkly and stuff like that. So it's not the um, the supple. Um, condition that it otherwise would be so these trees are the leaves have dropped off and they're withered they're limp and they're dry and he's asking him um do you see these trees and Hermes replied that yes i see that the trees are dry and withered okay. verse 2 he says he answering said unto me these trees are like unto men who live in the present world I replied, sir, why are they like unto dry trees? Because, said he, neither the righteous nor the unrighteous are known from one another, but all are alike in the present world. Okay, so Hermas asked him, he said, well, sir, why are you saying that these trees, that the, the men of today, the people of today, are like dry trees? And he said, because... In this in today's world that you can neither tell the righteous from the unrighteous mm -hmm. so we ask what are who are the righteous and the unrighteous okay so the righteous from doing a study studying of the scriptures looking at you know the concordance going through dictionaries and by the way, let me just throw in this. When you're buying, when you're purchasing a dictionary, I, I would suggest that you go to a thrift store mm -hmm. 
and get one of those old dictionaries. Yeah. Don't get one of those today's new world dictionary because they have words in them that um change the meaning they have words. changed the meaning, the meaning right of a whole lot of the words i would suggest you go back and get one of those old dictionaries from the thrift stores those that's about the size of you know how those thick telephone books were right. those big old thick ones um that have some of the best meanings of it and they'll bring out the words for you but that being said the righteous are those who or when you think of a righteous person, you think of a person that's upstanding, a person that has virtues, a person that has morals, a person that's ethical. But it also tells us that the righteous person are those who rejoice in keeping the laws of the Lord. Okay. So the laws of the Lord. Keeping the laws of the Lord. Now, on the other hand, an unrighteous person, when you think of an unrighteous person, you think of a person that's unjust a person that's sinful a person that's wicked and it also says that an unrighteous person is contrary which means opposed to the law well i think that's important because when you use words like sinful and wicked and evil and bad those are words of conjecture words of of, of opinion words um that can have different meanings for different people but when you define it and says that it's following the law well that's a very strict definition because you know there's a very there's only a very few people that's following the law and there's no accident you know that they're doing that it takes it takes effort so um i think that's a that's a good point where, where did you get that definition from this definition comes out of the one of those old 1800 dictionaries okay all right and it says something about the law in there yeah it does okay so the angel is telling him that um, that these trees are a representation of the righteous and the unrighteous. Okay, so in the present day world, the world that we live in now is saying that everybody is like dry trees. It's like the winter time for the trees and we all look alike. You can't tell those who are keeping the law from those who aren't keeping the law. Correct. Well, Cliff, I know this is one of your favorites, you know, all during the winter time, you would point out and say, talk about, you know, these trees. Um, and I, as a matter of fact, it's summer here now, we're going into the summer season, and the trees are full of green leaves, and, and, and you know, everything is alive and green and lush. But I remember a couple of months ago, when the trees were... Well, I mean, we have, I would say we have thousands and thousands of trees on our land. And you cannot tell, you couldn't tell, you would say, let's put a ribbon around the pecan trees so that we'll know that, you know, they are pecan trees. But we had a hard time because we couldn't tell. Yeah. Our leaves was already shed and you couldn't tell which one was which. Right, right. So it's hard to tell. Which tree, just by looking at the bark alone, um, which tree is which? Because I'm, I'm bad at telling trees apart anyway. And, you know, I'm just now being able to tell a pecan leaf from an oak leaf. <laughs> and, you know, without the leaves on it, I'm really lost. You can't tell the difference. And so the, what they're saying is, is in the present world, we can't tell the difference. We, we don't know who... We don't know who to listen to. We don't know who the righteous people are that's telling us the truth. And we can't tell them from the unrighteous preacher who is telling us lies. There's no way to tell. And so when you flip on the television, you don't know which one, which one of these ministers you're supposed to be listening to or if you're supposed to be listening to any of them at all. That's where we live at now. Now, the next parable, I hate to jump ahead on you, but the next parable kind of, we go to the summertime trees, right, where you can tell them apart. Well, you can tell them apart, right. So we have, we'll wait for the next class to talk about that. But, okay, let's continue with the dry trees now because we, we're still in the wintertime now, right? Yep, we're still in the wintertime. Okay, so in number three, I'm going to let you read that. For this world is as the winter to the righteous because they are not known but dwell among sinners. I think number three is a key. It says, for this world is as the winter to the righteous. For this world is as the winter to those who agree with the law. And then it says, because, which is our answer, because they are not known, but dwell among sinners. And I've wrote down in my note, uh, notes, because they are not separated, 
but reside among the unrighteous who are opposed to the law. So we're all mixed in together, well, and there's no way to tell that that the lawgivers, the law keepers are different because they all down at Walmart together and they all down at Guy Young working at the, the car manufacturing plant, they all together. We're all together. Just as the example that uh, the Messiah gave when he said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're in the wheat and the tear growing part. And, you know, like, like I said, I'm new to this farming thing. I'm, I'm, I'm a hillbilly and we didn't, we don't have, you know, farms up there. But I'm looking at this wheat out here growing beside this other stuff, and I, I'm assuming it's the tares. And with my virgin eyeballs, don't I can't tell the difference. I don't know the wheat, and I don't know the tares. They look they look alike. So that parable makes sense now that I'm looking at, you know, some real live wheat, some real live tares. Well, you got to tell them about that. You did. We grew wheat. We grew wheat down here. We grew, Cliff grew a patch of wheat. Right. And some grass grew up and it seems like the grass was trying to mimic the wheat they look alike. because they all yeah, look I can't alike tell, I can't tell you can't before. tell the difference if you are standing a couple of feet away they all look alike but you have to get up real close and say well this is not wheat this is grass they're all the same height they're all the same shape they're all the same color but it's yeah. grass. Yeah. It's not wheat. Same shit. And that's the same way we are now as all of us as ministers are trying to go out and trying to give the word of the Lord. We don't know which ministers we're supposed to be looking looking at. They all look alike. You know, T.D. Jakes looks just like, you know, the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug who is saying the same thing as, you know, all these guys are doing it and there's no way to tell us apart. Not 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 right now. There's no way. He says, because we dwell among the unrighteous. Because we're right there with them. Because we're right there with, her, with them. Okay, and let's go to the last one, number four. And in the winter, all the trees having lost their leaves are like dry trees, nor can it be discerned which are dry and which are green. So in the present world, neither the righteous nor the wicked are discerned from each other. But they are all alike. That's a matter of fact statement. All of them are alike. And in one of my notes I said, with the dry trees, they have no sap. No sap. No, none of that. Okay. And the, the green the tree. Sap is in the ground. The, exactly. Like right. In the green trees, they have sap. Okay. So we'll talk about in our next um, similitudes, similitudes four, how in the summer times how how you will be able to tell okay. because leaves will be able to form and more importantly fruit so when 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 do we get to the summertime um you're asking me when a day <laughs> <laughs> you put me on the spot uh, uh, i'm going to say i'm going to say tomorrow you can't tell how are you going to tell yeah how are you going to know Tomorrow is in another thousand years from now. No, okay, okay. Oh, I, oh, I thought you were saying when was when was I gonna do the next class? No. Oh, no, you're no, saying, saying when, are we, when are we gonna be in in the next uh, in the summertime? I know you couldn't answer. Yeah, that. I yeah. Kind of plug in the third testament. Yeah, stuff. okay. You get in that third testament stuff when you start talking about when, and that, that's what I was alluding to. So, are uh, you guys? You, you're in you're in uh, Hermes Academy White over here. This is where you know Stacy's teaching Hermes. She thinks she's doing a good job. Mm. But you guys want to come on over to uh, Hermes Academy Black? We are going into the Third Testament. We're gonna tell you. We're gonna tell you some. We're gonna tell you about these trees, all right? Yeah, Hermes Academy Black. Um, yeah, it's it's it's. Would you say that it's not a? Um, it's an advanced class. Would you say that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's. No, I wouldn't say advanced. No, it's it's just it's just that there it's a New Testament. It's a, the Third Testament in the Bible. Nobody's really familiar with it. It's is is actually easier to understand than the new testament and the old testament because it is doing what it says is bringing spirit and truth so as you read the third testament you're able to understand even the stuff you read back in genesis exodus mark matthew mark luke and john so it's i no, i wouldn't say it's an advanced class so i would say that you know listen y'all that you know the third testament that the book that the Messiah was talking about. Remember, he said that if books was written about him, this room wouldn't even be able to help them. Planet wouldn't be able to help. There is a third testament, yeah, and 
It has been discovered, and if you're tired, you're saying, well, I'm tired of reading these same verses in the New Testament and the Old Testament, which, you know, you, we know you do get something new from an olive, but there is actually a third testament, and it talks, as my husband was saying, about the spirit and the truth, and it pulls everything together. Yeah. So I would just invite you all to go over, and if you're intrigued about it, to, to, to listen because well, he's doing well, some hold classes. Up. Before you run over there, you know, you need the Hermes classes. That's why it's very important that we finish the Hermes classes because, you know, if you come over to Hermes, if you come over to Hermes Academy Black and try to jump into spiritualism, you're going to be missing some stuff. You've got to have what you're teaching here in Hermes is necessary in order to enjoy that what you seek in the Third Testament. I mean, you got to understand about these trees. Remember the last class you gave about the giving? That is a huge part about, you know, mm, activating yeah, right, the, right, right. The, um, the spiritual, um, the, the, to become spiritualized is the, to become charitable. And so if you don't understand what you talked about in that second class, similar to two about giving and sharing, you're, the chances that you're going to accidentally fall into a position where you are able to evolve spiritually is slim to none. The probability is not there. You've got to have Hermes. You've got to have what you, what you, the class you're teaching here and the stuff you're teaching is extremely important in order to unlock the spiritualism door. You, you just can't do it unless you're just born a, a really, really good person. And I, I don't, I don't think there was only but one that was born a good person. Okay. So y'all continue to uh, listen to the Hermes class. We ask that you will, um, you know, comment, give me your comments, and don't forget to subscribe. And um, and give us a thumbs up. All right. So we'll see you guys in the next class of Similitudes 4. Shalom. Shalom.